Good evening, everybody. It's now June the 26th on a Tuesday, and we're going to go over Bitcoin in detail today, where we're going to do an RSI and also a moving average technical analysis. My apologies for not updating recently, guys. What I find is that a lot of traders will focus on predicting the market. Whereas myself, if someone had to ask me, right, has predicting the market helped you be successful? I would tell them, no, it has not. Because the ultimate skill to have, in my opinion, is how to react in the market and make additional changes, right? And make changes on the fly as the market changes. So what I'm never in a moment of is, oh my goodness, it's actually doing something the opposite of what I wanted to do, right? And I'm, I'm never in that situation because when I am in that situation, it's more like, wow, it's actually doing plan B or C or D or E instead, where this is all mapped out just because plan A didn't go according to count uh, to plan doesn't mean that plan B, C, D, or E may not happen as well. So lately, guys, I've been having monstrous days. You guys need to follow me on Twitter if you have not been following me on Twitter already. I either put my calls out there where I'm entering a position before I enter it or I'll go over a very good summary of how I was successful in that trade. In the past 24 hours, I am up well over $10,000 where I had one single trade of mine. There was a single trade where I actually made $4,000 on a single trade, guys, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys it right here as well, all right? This was the, the trade of the day. Okay, right here. I just want to show you guys the potential profit that can happen in a trade. So check this out right here, okay? So right here, it's going to get much clearer in a few seconds. There we go. I'm up about $2,100 on EOS right there, okay? I'm up about $1,700 on Bitcoin. And this is what you call a $4,000 trade by going long on specific places right here, okay? Pretty awesome, right? Cannot complain about that at all. I caught the bottom. I literally caught the bottom, okay? So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to reacting in the market. Now, how was I able to make this $4,000 profit trade, guys? And how was, was I able to make $10,000 in the past 24 hours? Very, very simple, okay? And the way that I did it was simply by reacting in the market as I saw drastic things change. In this particular case, I saw the level two price action just spike up all green. So right now we're trending below $250 billion, which is kind of scary right now. Now we're trending two days in a row now at the $3 billion range, which is actually very scary in my opinion. I don't want to trend in this range, guys. I want to trend well over $4 billion, but guys, we need more retail investors to hop on board. We need more institutions as well. Institutions is what's going to grow Bitcoin. We have to remember right now that we're on a very finite... That's Mel, by the way, if you guys don't know who Mel is. She's my bae. Uh, she's living in Thailand right now. And um, I was just looking for my new passport, and I couldn't find it. So um, maybe because I moved recently again, uh, so I had to order a new passport again because I just want to go say hi to her again. Kind of low-key miss her. So anyways, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So what we have to remember as well is that every coin, guys, will basically move a factor of Bitcoin, okay? So just as an example, we see Bitcoin here move 3.82%, right? But what we actually see on EOS is it's moved much more than that. It moved 8.26%. So if Bitcoin moves, say, 4%, some coins might actually move a lot more. That's why right now I'm reacting to changes in the market rather than trying to predict. Because reacting like this, like trading EOS, like going long on sp sp specific places, it's what's helping me become very profitable, right? Rather than just sitting around waiting and trying to predict the market. Okay, so let's get into this de technical analysis, guys. I've got a company coming over in about 10 minutes, so I've got to get this done very quickly as well. All right. I'm, I, you know what? I might actually, um, when when he gets here, I might just actually ask him to just chill around for a bit, okay? Um, because I want to do a pretty detailed one for you guys here. So right now, the way that I'm seeing this is, is still very bearish, okay? We need to go over, first of all, what the daily finished off at. So we take a look at here, okay? This daily right there was actually a very good candle, right? That's where I went long on it, guys. I went long on it around 58.50 there because I started seeing wicks reject, right? 
And another major key reason why I went long is because on the three hour chart, guys, this bounce gave it away for me, okay? Take a look at this histogram tick up. Do you guys see that histogram tick up? As soon as it ticked up one there, we were already in the range of right here, okay? Do you see this histogram tick up? Right there. This is the candle. As soon as this candle was forming, I went long on there. Two reasons why I went long. One reason was because I saw, first of all, the histogram tick up. Secondly, this also confirmed my bullish divergence for our side. These two things right here, with another low down, basically was the entry point for me to enter a trade. Now, the way that I saw it as well, was I saw this as very tiny sub waves, okay? I saw this as a possible sub wave down here as one. I saw this as two, basically. And I saw this as three, right? I see it's four, and I still see actually one more forming very soon. So this is going to be, unfortunately, a few more hundred dollars down. But guys, I'm going to show you how to play this, okay? I'm going to show you guys how to play Bitcoin right now and what I plan to do. Now, there are basically two types of traders, okay? In my opinion, there's basically two types, okay? One, there are the people who try to catch the bottom, right? Who catch the bottom right there. And then there are the people who buy into strength instead, right? They're the breakout players. One, there's basically the people who accumulate on the bottom or try to. And then two, there are people who buy into strength, the breakout players, whether it goes up or down. I am a combination of both of them, okay? I'm a combination of both of them where I've molded my strategy to make sure that I'm very safe. So, for example, this is the strategy you guys would have used, right? You guys would have waited for a breakout right there around this range, and as soon as the volume confirmed it, which it pretty much had, you guys buy into strength, right? And then, but me, personally, what I did on this one was I actually bought it on support instead, so I tried to catch the bottom. So yes, I am a conservative player where I focus on both, where I'm focusing on catching the bottom and buying into strength, right? But at the same time, sometimes I will be much more aggressive as well and also focus on catching the bottom. So guys, now the next thing that we do always is this, okay? We wait for basically a retracement and we can do one of two things, okay? Well, first of all, we need to acknowledge where the resistance is, okay? Where's the resistance, guys? Go to a high time frame and look for that resistance, okay? Where is this resistance? Well, one, one is clearly right there, I would say. If we go to a different time frame, it doesn't really matter. There are two resistances that we can make note of, okay? One would be this right here, right? Would you guys agree with me that that's a resistance, right? Based on wicks poking up. And then the second one would be around there. And the other regions are basically bull trapped regions. So the area of interest would be right there, okay? Now, let's go over what is what people should do, what I would do. Keep in mind, I'm no financial advisor. I'm just talking about what I'm doing, right? So right now, what I am going to do is I'm going to accumulate between these ranges here, between 558 and about 6050, okay? The reason why I'm going to do that is because I would like to add about 25% of my position to the long, right? And yes, guys, I am holding some Bitcoin for extremely long holds where I added more to here. I will add more if it goes even lower than that. I will keep adding more. Uh, thanks, my friends here. Okay, guys, I'm going to go let him in. And uh, I'm going to continue this tea in about five minutes. Actually, he's not here quite yet. So I will add 25% of my position into here, okay? And then I will add perhaps another 10% of my position size in here, okay? And then, as soon as we break this key resistance, I will add the majority of my position to add into strength. Think of it as being a team player, okay? Think of being a team player. What adding into strength means is as we are about to break a resistance and you are seeing walls of green, what you want to do is buy into strength to make it even more green because you are being a team player. You are giving a visual cue to everybody else as well who's looking at what you're looking, that there's green across the board. So if there's green across the board, then it might actually encourage other people to buy into it as well, right? Whereas if you are not buying into strength and you're trying to drive up the price by putting a limit order up instead, someone has to sell to you, which will make the order book look red, 
right? So if it actually looks red, it's not nearly as encouraging as buying the strength. So you guys also have to treat this as a video game. And f unfortunately, the way that you are trying to perceive yourself in the market also has an impact on how these trends can start as well, right? If more people hop on the bandwagon of being on the same page of say buying into strength, then it'll just look overall much more visually appealing in the order book and to the algos to go long as well. So yes, I will absolutely add 25% of my position between here. Guys, we're getting a series of hopefully a higher high, right? What you want to look for always is a series of higher highs, okay? So right now, and a series of higher lows. So if this actually bounces from a higher low, great. Add a little bit to your position is what I always do. And then as it breaks, it gets near the key resistance zones. I will add a little bit more, less percentage wise than where I added here. That's why I mentioned 25% here, 10% here, and bam. If I added 65% of my position here, and we're talking about some pretty big positions, guys, all right? Like, I'm talking about playing $100,000 positions. So um, I'll be adding, you know, 25K here, 10K here, another 65K here. So these are definitely not uh, small sizes. So I have to take into account very seriously what I plan to do as well. Like, I'm not saying this is the only way to trade, guys, right? Like, nor am I a financial advisor of any sort at all. It's more so just um, me giving you guys solid advice of how professional traders treat the market, right? And um, clearly, I, clearly I do it for a living and clearly I'm doing something right. So I just want to share with you guys what I'm doing as well, right? So this is basically the bounce that I caught, guys. Like, <laughs> honestly, right here, okay? As it was going down on the 15-minute chart. Actually, not even on the 15. I was looking on the 5-minute chart, believe it or not, okay? Um, I was looking on the 5-minute chart right here, guys. And as soon as he got to super low digits down over there, right? I kind of just had this feeling, guys, that it was going to poke up. As soon as I saw this volume pick up there on the sell and the volume on the buy and these green candles, that's where I went long, guys. That's where I went long on it. And I added more to my position on this breakout right there. And I just wrote it. And by the time I knew it, I was up like 5% on these guys. I was up 5% or 8 7% on EOS as well, right? Like, I rolled that thing nice. Like, I didn't get double digits 10% gains, but it was still pretty good. So anyways, let's go back to Bitcoin. So, like, what we always have to do is try to hope for a higher high. Okay, that's what I, that's what I want. And a higher low. So that's why I'm very inclined to add some to my position there. I mean, what do you do, guys, right? Do you hope for a number, like 4,800, 5,200 to hit? And then you just buy there and just wait? Or do you always have to take these chances? Like, yeah, I'm going to take these chances, guys. Like, I will always take chances. And I spot opportunities far away. Let's say you averaged out your price to become anywhere between 618. Great. Target up there as, as its first, first target, right? For a 5% gain. This way you can shed some off of the top, take some profit, add more into strength. If it does end up breaking well above there as well later, right? Now, let's say it doesn't even hit my target area. No problem. And it just ends up bouncing off of here instead because that two hour bear, uh, bullish spinning top is where Doji is working out okay. And it never even gets to my ladder zone. Well, a lot of people will say things like, oh crap, you suggested to do that, but it never happened. Well, what was your backup plan for if that didn't happen, right? Well, my backup plan, if it never hits this area right here, is simply to just buy into strength. Same thing here, add 10% to my position around these regions if I'm confirming more of a bullish trend. And then I simply just add a lot into strength when it breaks out above there, right? So what we always want to do is this, guys. This is Make sure you guys are following me on Twitter because I post a lot of general tips on Twitter. I just haven't really made a lot of YouTube videos lately. Guys, this is called the breakout strategy, okay? The breakout strategy involves this. Okay, the white line is where it breaks out like that, right? Now, a lot of people will wait for a high to form and then a low to form but the low has to be higher than the previous low. And we call this a higher low, okay? When a higher low forms, people will, well, experienced players will ladder, right? They'll ladder their buying into there as it drops lower and lower because they're expecting it to bounce. And then they'll add more onto strength as it breaks upwards, right? This is called the breakout strategy, guys, right? So what we're always wanting is basically a series of a higher low, okay? 
a higher low right here and then you buy into strength as it breaks out to break higher than the previous high right this is what a lot of players in the market will actually do and it's either that or you're trying to catch the bottom over here which is incredibly hard to catch the bottom right so another thing that i always like to do is this okay guys let's say that actually let's say it moves down okay it's it's moved down about five waves already we'll see okay we'll see it has moved down roughly five waves already sometimes i make a mistake and i ladder by accident right too early like on the fifth wave now i start laddering for example right here instead right because i think it's near the bottom and then what i do is i take my fibonacci retracement and i go for these tiny little percentage gains so I take my fib in there, and even if it's right there, for example, I say to myself, okay, well, it can still retrace to 382, and I can still get a 1.88% gain, right? But now let's say it goes even lower, right? And I, I screw up by accident. I'll still keep laddering to my, to my original targets. I'll extend my Fibonacci retracement, and now I'll say to myself, okay, if this is now my average price, right? Now that I've laddered all the way down there, and if this is my average price right here, Let's just say like that that only only that white line is right there right because i got my average price around here that i say to myself okay well based on elliot wave and fibonacci retracement i can still make about a one point you know six six percent scalp or whatever or 1.6 percent scalp so that's how i basically gauge how much to buy and what kind of retracement it can get up to for me to hit these specific targets so right now as it stands guys if we do a very detailed count right like or sorry uh, trend line analysis in general wasn't it kind of expected to bounce around here guys just based on these wicks etc you know like say this particular range do we have a chance to actually break above to over here like is this a possibility where we're gonna make one more rally up there and then we finally hit my target of 5200 okay we are right now on a very, very, very large bear run, okay? We look on the 15 minute chart right now, and I'll explain to you guys what a death cross and a golden crossover is, okay? So a death cross is where, if this right here was the 55, the 50 moving average rather, okay? 55 moving average. And if this line right here was the 100 moving average, the death cross is when, okay? the 100 moving average which is the white line ends up moving above the 55 moving average and we call this a death cross okay a death cross like right there right the yellow one was actually the first of all the white line is the 200 moving average which is, which is acting as support for the 55 but then now the 200 ends up moving above everything which now acts as a resistance which is why they call it a death cross because now the 200 is now resisting everything so on a 10 minute chart we have some massive resistance from the death cross a 45 minute chart still death cross three hour chart still death cross daily chart still death cross we have not uptrended on any particular time frame on even on a low time frame okay not even on here okay so here if you were to buy the death cross simply too late right you got to anticipate these these types of death cross or sorry golden crossovers so what we want to wait for now is basically a support around these levels now, I'm kind of bored of just doing TA and just, you know, telling people and suggesting to people where it could land, where it can get up to. No, guys, forget about that now, okay? You want to become a better trader, you got to learn how to react to the market and plan for these kind of things. So now I'm going to take it one step further and I'm going to show you guys how I personally play the market all the time and how I'm like, how I was literally able to make 20. <laughs> what do you do with that, guys, when you're making $10,000 in a 24 hour period? Go to my Twitter, check out all my trades, guys, and you guys will see proof in the pudding. But there are some months where you're doing like, you know, 30, 40, 50K a month, right? And um, my biggest month was actually six figures. Like, so what I'm trying to get to is, um, yeah, I haven't had a six figure month in a long time, guys. It's been a while, put it that way. Um, but you know, what I'm trying to get to is that guys, this is not bragging. This is me making videos to try to show you guys how to trade. If you guys have not seen my previous video yet. Okay. The one where I'm trying to show you guys how to grow a $25,000 balance into 
uh, uh, sorry, a 20k balance to a 25k balance. Make sure you guys are watching that, okay? I wanted to get you guys an awesome video. So watch this video, guys, okay? This is the 20 to 25k challenge where I was playing with a 20k account only and I made 5k in four days, guys. I was taking high risk, high probability trades, but that's how I trade. So if you're making 5k every four days, guys, okay? That's averaging $1,250 a day, $1,250 a day, and you multiply that by 20 workdays a week. That's a, whoops, I pressed enter twice already by accident there. So you're making $1,250 on a small account even, and you multiply that by 20, right? Well, that's a $25,000 payroll, like salary a month. You multiply that by 12 months and you're talking about $300,000 in salary off of a small account too. So what I want to show you guys is literally how to trade, not how to follow guys. If you want to follow, if you guys want, I can gladly make a signal service if you'd like, okay? It'll be geared towards people who will actually never become better traders that will just give me a lot of money that will pay for my subscriptions and for my calls every week where the majority of people will probably fail because trading is all about entering properly, right? It's all about timing. It's not about following. Now, I'm not making fun of anybody who has a signal service. I'm sure it benefits a lot of people. But my view and my take on trading is very different. It is not to make money off of you guys, okay? If you guys thought that I was trying to make money off of you guys by selling my Udemy package, you got it all wrong. What I am trying to do is put value into your learning. Think of it like this, okay guys? Uh, my lips are a little dry. Think of it like this. Was that $190 that you guys spent on the Udemy course probably, the, probably a really good investment compared to other things that you've made? I personally believe that whatever I am doing in the community is offering a lot of value. I'm just really sick of getting crapped on by the community. That's why I've kind of taken a small hiatus for the past week or so. But guys, I just want to show you guys how to trade, not how to follow, not how to, how, how to you know, get fish thrown at you. I want to teach you guys how to fish, how to do this for yourselves. And make sure you guys are watching this video of mine, okay? So yeah, that's my plan, guys, to ladder in between here. If we find support in these particular regions, wonderful, okay? We're going to have a very nice uptrend if we break above those particular regions I specified earlier as well. Now, let's say that's on the bullish side, right? Let's say on the bearish side, guys. Bear side is, nah, this doesn't do anything at all. And we still end up getting nasty, nasty runs all the way down to the 5200 ranges as expected, right? So let's just say that that, that wasn't really our bottom. Well, guys, here's 4800 that still conforms. This whole area right here, guys, still conforms to our metric of 48 to 5800, doesn't it? That whole region. Yes, guys, it really does. So... Anywhere along this line that it hits on the bear side is where I absolutely plan to be just stacking up my buys because I don't think this is getting to 3k. I don't think this is getting to low 4k's. I think this could possibly get up to 48 to 52 if it hasn't reached support already. We'll find out very soon if it had reached support if we start upticking very heavily on the daily, okay? This is the daily chart right here, right? The histogram is actually much more, it's lower. In terms of bullishness, we're getting some fairly bullish momentum going to the upside. So this could break out very, very soon. But if all of a sudden we start getting histograms that tick to the downside, then that's where you guys are going to be in a lot of trouble. Take a look at here as well. On the bullish side, we are getting a series of bullish momentum going upwards, right? A higher low, but lower low on price action. So I'm just waiting right now to see what could possibly happen. Uh, we might get a few more histogram ticks to the downside. I'm just waiting as well for more histogram ticks. It's a lot of planning, guys. Planning and reacting to the market, right? So on the bear side, guys, like once again, right? Easily, I can see it hitting along these trend lines. to just go lower and lower and lower and lower. But on the bullish side, as soon as we find support, like this is no bearish flag, guys. This is no bearish flag that we see right now. This is a bearish flag. This was so obvious, it was going to break down that I don't know how else we could have spelled it out, right? You look, you draw your scenarios like that pretty much, in my opinion, and actually more so like that, right? And as soon as it broke out to right here, that gigantic wick down tried to break above it to do a death, to do a golden crossover again, but it couldn't. 
and it said it death crossed heavily, right? These are the ones that you guys want to short the market. You want to short the market as it breaks this lower resistance and as it goes from a golden crossover that couldn't sustain to a death cross that drops straight down. But this right here, guys, is not a bear flag in any way. This is an impulse wave up right here, and it's looking beautiful. I'm really much so hoping to catch the bottom and also specifically remember what I'm saying, a breakout above about 6,300. 63 to 6,350 is the breakout price right there that you guys want to watch out for specifically. So yeah, there you guys have it. These are my thoughts. These are my plays. Now, I'm also watching Bitcoin because whatever Bitcoin does, it'll affect EOS as well right now, okay? But one thing I want to be very clear of as well is that we are currently on a downtrend and a, a, a medium degree downtrend that has just started again, okay? Which recently tried to do a crossover to the positive side of just the 55 VMA, went above it, and we actually got shot down really hard on the one hour chart. Shot down on every single time frame. We are still in a very bearish trend, but support and a breakout may happen soon. So anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this technical analysis video. I really appreciate you guys supporting me and showing me a lot of love, especially when there's so much negativity in the community towards me that it kind of makes me not want to be here. And I know I've talked about Thailand how many times now, guys, where it just keeps getting canceled on me. But um, yeah, like I've ordered a passport again. I've already talked to my beautiful friend Mel there. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be really good when I go see her there. And I, I kind of need a vacation as well. I uh, I booked a massive... I booked one of these places, guys. Yeah, I, I took a leap of faith already, okay? That I'm going to go. I booked a, like a penthouse with an infinity pool at the top. You guys know what an infinity pool is? It's one of those pools like at the top there that, you know, where you can... That's pretty much what it is, an infinity pool. So I booked I booked a, a place in, in actually Batong Beach already. I uh, haven't don't have a flight yet though that overlooks some um, like it's pretty cool It's pretty cool. It was very expensive, but um Yeah, I think Mel is gonna stay with me too, and then we're probably gonna go to one of these huts We've been talking about it like you know one of those awesome huts like in the middle of nowhere in the beach that has like infinity pools as well You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like so I'm kind of like in planning stages right now Like one of those really like remote places where you have to take a boat out that there's like some awesome hut and infinity pool that you stay far out so yeah i'm pretty excited i've got a lot of plans right now i really hope that they all come to fruition because knowing me crypto and other things tend to take over as i make plans um one thing that i am very bad at in real life is commitment right that's why i can't keep uh, that's why before like i couldn't i couldn't really keep a job in terms of being happy there right i couldn't be happy there because i'm always very flaky but when it comes to crypto, hey, I'm actually good in it. And hopefully we can all thrive in it. So anyways, just wanted to give you guys a quick update on where I personally stand with Bitcoin and what I plan to do soon. Have yourselves a great night. And thank you very much for all the love and the support as always. Bye now. Take care, guys. See you.